OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Hello, everyone. Welcome. We're very pleased to be here. Thank you for everybody that's there live. We wish we could be there with you in Sacramento, but we're very pleased to be able to participate in this hybrid model. Um, so we are San Diego Adult School. We are part of San Diego Unified School District which has about 100,000 students across 180 schools. Um, we are also part of a consortium with the San Diego College of Continuing Education. Um, so we target the students that are 18 and 19 years old, while our partners at SDCCE target our students who are 20 and over. All right, so I am Nate Sachdeva. I'm the program manager for San Diego Adult School. This is my 15th year with San Diego Unified. Um, I've had teaching experience at the elementary and high school levels. Uh, I was a middle school vice principal as well as an uh, elementary school principal prior to coming to central office and leading the San Diego Adult School. I came on board in February of 2020. So it's been quite a fun journey. And Nicole? Hi, my name is Nicole Lincoln and I've been with San Diego Adult School for about eight years now. Prior to that, I did five years in San, uh, Los Angeles Unified as an elementary school teacher. And here you will see our um, staff members that work with us, our team members. We have Kirstie Tate, she's our school counselor. She meets with students regarding some of the career options available to them. And then we have our teachers, Esmeralda Escamilla, who's located at our Crawford site, Rosa McCollum, who is at our Garfield site, uh, Megan Johnson, who is at our Mira Mesa site, and Carol Weiss, who's also at our Mira Mesa site. They both um, work at the site together. And Carol is, uh, specifically works with our students, adult basic education, and then myself at Lincoln. <laughs> People always say Lincoln. Yeah, my last name is the name of the school that I'm at. The perfect place for it. Just a coincidence. And at San Diego Adult School, we're offering an engaging comprehensive program for students who are seeking their high school diploma. So like I said earlier, we we're really targeting those 18, 19 year olds who are not successful at our comprehensive sites. Um, we have transitioned to a flexible online educational experience. Um, we've had a lot of learning over the last couple of years. Um, if we go back three or four years, we were a packet-based program. So luckily, prior to the pandemic, we began to transition over to an online platform utilizing Edmentum. Um, and that allowed us to reach the needs of more students, which is always what we want to do. Um, and now we've also been able to partner with our partners at the College of Continuing Education, um, that's Nicole's bell ringing at Lincoln High School, so just ignore that. Um, and one of the benefits of our program is that our students are to take and pass a college level course as part of our high school um, requirements, um, but they do get that support from our instructors as well as tuition waived for that college course. And so the idea is that our students will take um, a college course and if they choose to pursue secondary education beyond their high school diploma, they know that they have the confidence to be able to succeed in that setting. Sorry about that. So as again, as, as I mentioned, there's four locations where students can come and receive services um, within our San Diego Unified School District, the Crawford location, Garfield, Lincoln, and our Mira Mesa location. Um, all of our instructors are available five days a week to meet with students. Uh, we offer tutoring services if students needed, um, guidance, career, academic, um, in just a welcoming environment for our students. Our Mira Mesa location also seem, uh, wants to attract uh, students who need uh, assistance in uh, language support. Um, our primary goal is to focus on students who have newly left high school, that 18, 19 year range. Uh, students over that age range can be serviced by our partners at San Diego Continuing Ed. Um, a major benefit of our program is that our learning management system at Mentum is open 24 hours, seven days a week. So students can log in and, you know, access their curriculum any time of the day. And then and in addition to that, our students have the ability to earn college credit by um, going to continuing education or one of the local community colleges for um, that college credit. 
And so why would we benefit from DLAC? Well, we wanted to figure out a way to create meaningful relationships with our students. And so over the past two years, we've added in an orientation piece where our students um, have an onboarding with our counselor as well as the instructor. Um, the counselor is able to go through the transcript prior to enrollment to let the students know um, what courses are gonna be needed and if we're the right fit for them. Um, they take the CASAS math and literacy assessment, but we've, as we all do, but we also added in the Beable literacy and strengths inventory assessment, which we're gonna uh, talk about a little bit later on in the presentation. And then this leads to our college and career planning meeting with our counselor. So the screen, the visual that you have right here is that actually the results of an assessment that a student took. So you can see what their strengths are. And then we can also connect that with possible careers that might be of interest to them. And then our counselor can also lead into different college coursework or curriculum that might be um, beneficial to them or might be of interest to them. So in the year one of DLAC, we were able to successfully transition our program 100% online. And we were already kind of leading in that direction, but when the pandemic hit, it was definitely the only way to go to be able to continue to service our students. Um, when we opened up the later part of the 2021 school year, we were able to offer support to students who wanted to come in and receive that face-to-face -face, um, assistance. Um, and one thing that we noticed, we needed to improve our communication. Um, we adopted technological tools like Zoom, Google Voice, um, uh, the Remind app so that we could, you know, have more of a direct communication means with students. Um, what did we learn through this? We learned that um, students that were working full-time, part-time students with children were able to participate in our program more. Um, the retention rates decreased, I mean increased, sorry about that. Um, we needed to do an overall of our drop-in approach. Students were more successful when we were able to meet them where they were as opposed to them meeting us where we are. And it became greater opportunities for students to study over the weekend, the evenings, other times when, you know, life was in the, you know, would prevent them from coming into the more traditional setting that we were offering. So the shifts that we made between years one is really, you know, in year one, we set our vision. We knew exactly where we wanted to go, but year two was kind of figuring it out exactly what it was going to look like and doing the work to get us there. Um, so when we implemented the Be Able uh, Literacy and Strengths Assessment, um, we also, another benefit was the relationship between the instructor, counselor, and the student. Um, it really allowed us to get an idea of who the student is on a, you know, on a personal level, and then have some conversations about what might be of interest to them and just let them know that there are multiple people um, through our school that care about them and are knowledgeable of their own personal interests. Um, through this, we also mapped out a coursework plan and career plan based on what the goals are of the student. And we really were able to foster a relationship between our students um, as well. And it's so important because as we all know, during the pandemic, that was the most difficult piece for our instructors and our students is that they didn't get to know each other on a personal level the way they used to. Um, and with, especially with our population, it's so important to have um, adults on campus that they can trust and that they know that they know a lot of interesting things about them and that they know about their unique needs um, as a student. So here you'll see an example of what the Ryasek survey students receive when they take the BEABLE um, program with us. Um, Ryasek stands for um, these acronyms listed realistic, investigative, artistic, social, enterprising, and conventional. And basically it was gearing the students toward um, their career interests. And um, it was, it's kind of basically what we did with Dr. Porter, what type of, when we were doing, when we first, first started, when we did the interest um, survey back then, and I'm drawing a blank on the name of it, but. Um, the Hall and Thank you. <laughs> Very similar to that students enjoyed taking this and then it really um, confirmed their thoughts about where their interests were once they did it. And so we take that information, these are actually screenshots from FileMaker, um, this, the platform that we use for our database for our students. Um, but so the students can find out more about themselves, the counselor can sit down and say, these are the college courses uh, that might lead you to the career that you're interested in. And we can set goals and monitor their progress throughout the school year. So some of the challenges that we um, 
faced, you know, we noticed that there was a limited amount of time that students had for taking uh, the assessments, um, going 100% online made it difficult to build a rapport with students. Um, you know, transfer, trans, transitioning from in-person seat time to um, the remote made it difficult to sometimes meet the needs of some of our diverse learning populations. Like for example, some of our ESL students, some of our students with IEPs. Um, we also noticed that some students had difficulty securing reliable technology uh, resources such as internet access. Um, sometimes they had difficulty communicating their or being an advocate for their needs if their computer didn't work for whatever reason, they had a difficult time making that known. Um, and then we also noticed that it might be post pandemic, um, a, a motivational uh, drive, lack of motivation for some students, trying to just get back into the thing of get back into the routine of things because the pandemic uh, seemed to wear on all of us as um, instructors, but I'm sure some of the students, we wondered if that might be the same. So our progress in year two, you know, now our students are thinking beyond the diploma, which is really one of the goals that we set out for. We are a high school diploma program, but our journey does not stop right when they receive the diploma. We want them to be not only focused on a job, but really thinking about a career. And we want them to be enthusiastic about that career. We want them to be really engaged and be a part of that process um, to make sure that we are setting forth a foundation for them to get there. And, you know, moving forward this year, um, during our trial period, we've had to kind of do these assessments mid-year or as the students were already enrolled. Ideally, it'll be part of our onboarding process so that our students um, will be able to get that knowledge about them up front when they first enroll with us, and then we can set that plan from day one. Um, but that is where we get into the time of the timing of all the assessments because it, we are adding extra layers and extra assessments on top of the already um, needed and required CASAS assessments. And here's a short testimonial from uh, my student, Ariane. She um, is going to speak on the Be Able program. Oops. I think the Beable career assessment is great. It shows you what your strengths are. Mine is enterprising, social, and artistic. So for the careers that I like, I like to do hair and I want to be a entrepreneur eventually. So when I was looking at the um, I, you click on a little profile person and it shows you the career. So I clicked up there and it shows you everything that you need to know to be a hairstylist. You need to have your station cleaned and all those things. And um, education wise, how far of education you need to have. You need to at least have a GED or a diploma. And then it tells you like um, about the type of hair you need to do, all those types of things of how far you need to go along for that so I think it's great depending on what career you want to choose you can find and pick and you can observe or explore around in the app I think it's a cool app to use so in summary you know Dr. Porter taught us to build on our own unique uh, strengths as a team and we did do that at the beginning of the school year uh, to learn about more about ourselves um, and then we wanted to expand that into the unique strengths of our students as well um, we've really learned that meeting the needs of the students where they are is an important aspect of our student success. We used to require uh, seat time requirements. We used to have required times where they had to visit the learning lab. But during the pandemic, we realized that a lot of our students are working or are parents, and they're, the typical hours of the school day are not do not fit their schedule. So they were doing a lot of their work in the evenings or on weekends. And so we wanted to make sure that we were open and accessible to all of those needs of our students. Um, and as we create that experience with our San Diego Dude School, we want it to be unique. Um, we want our students to be excited about their next steps and feel like they're a part of a community. And in closing, we just wanted to say thank you um, to the following individuals. Shout out to Cindy, our DLAC coach, Ned and Penny, Dr. Porter and Destiny, all of our fellow DLACers and our San Diego Adult School team members. 
And that concludes our presentation. Thank you very, very much.